One of the great things about Jesus is he is the only one who can say without any uh, qualifiers that he has the ability when you follow him to make you what you are not, to make you into something else or someone else. Just listen to Christ's words. Follow me. Follow me. Come after me, do what I do, model my example, and I will make you a fisher of men. Everyone is a leader. Everyone is a leader. Maybe you don't believe that. Maybe you don't, you don't see yourself as a leader. You don't think of yourself as a leader. Maybe you don't carry a title or a rank. Maybe you don't see yourself as someone that has any real influence over others. I don't know where you stand. I don't know where your heart is. I don't know where your beliefs are. Whether you are three years old or 85 years old with resources or not with people following you or not I want to make the case that everyone is a leader and my simple question this morning is what type of leader what type of leader do you want to be if that's true what type of leader do you want to be I got a couple minutes here's a little bit of double edge uh, this song is called saved by grace saved by grace based on Ephesians chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 and uh, double edge right we are saved not by righteous works we have done for it's by grace through faith not of ourselves it's a gift of God. We are saved. Not by righteous works we have done. For it's by grace through faith, not of ourselves. It's the gift of God. I remember being bound in my sin, knowing what was right, but being controlled. By the power within Rebelling against the God of creation I did that which was right In my own eyes And living the words of Solomon I drank and be merry Knowing not tomorrow that I could die. We are saved by grace. We are saved. Not by righteous works. Not by righteous works we have done. For it's by grace. For it's by grace. By grace through faith. And not of ourselves It's the gift of God Don't you love that? We are saved Yes we are Yes we are Yes we are 
not by righteous works we have done. For it's by grace through faith, not of ourselves, it's a gift of God. This is my favorite part. I remember being bound. I remember being bound in my sin. Till the day that Jesus came and took me in, He gave me a new heart, turning my whole life around. There's nothing to boast in, for by Christ I have been found. What a beautiful reminder. Just to sing the scriptures, we are saved by grace. We're saved by grace. Just because we're saved by grace doesn't mean there's no effort required. Just because we're saved by grace doesn't mean there are no commandments to be obeyed. Because we're saved by grace doesn't mean that there is no duty or responsibility or demands from the Lord of creation. Anyway, that song is called Saved by Grace. I got a couple minutes. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this nugget of wisdom I called Everyone is a Leader. Everyone is a leader. Everyone is a leader. This will affect how you parent your children. This will affect how you handle challenges in your life. This will affect how you deal with people around you. So here we go. Everyone is a leader. What do I mean by that? Simple question. What kind of leader... Do you want to be? If the statement I'm making is true, if this nugget of wisdom is that everyone is a leader, how should that affect you? Matthew chapter 4 and verse 18, it says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren. Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother. And what were these two men doing? They were casting their nets because into the sea because they were fishermen. And what I want you to get here is that these men have a career. They're part of an industry, and that industry is called fishing, right? That's their industry. They are fishermen. And uh, then Jesus is coming along, and Jesus is going to say to them, he is going to, if they follow him, he will make them to do what they are now doing in a different way. And here we find these words, very popular, very well known. Matthew 4, 19 says, And Jesus saith, saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishes of men. Follow me, and I will make you fishes of men. One of the great things about Jesus is he is the only one who can say without any uh, qualifiers, that he has the ability, when you follow him, to make you what you are not. To make you into something else or someone else. Just listen to Christ's words. Follow me. Follow me. Come after me. Do what I do. Model my example. And I will make you a fisher of men. And immediately these men left everything they had uh, to follow Christ. What authority, what power? So what does that have to do with leadership? It has everything to do with leadership. I think it's John Maxwell that says leadership is influence. I agree with that, right? You, you're not leading anybody as no one, if no one's following. But in a bigger sense, we lead by example. Because many things are caught, not taught. And whether you know or are aware that someone is observing you or not is irrelevant to whether or not you're leading. And so what I'd like to challenge and help you to think when you think about leadership is two basic ideas. That one, leadership is a way of thinking. And two, leadership is a way of doing. Leadership is a way of thinking and a way of doing. First, leadership is a way of thinking. Leadership is a mindset. It has nothing to do with rank. It has nothing to do with authority. It has nothing to do with position. It has nothing to do with title. 
A person can have all of that and still not be a, quote, good leader. This is why God says, he that is faithful in little will be made ruler over much. See, God looks for leadership in the little things before he puts someone or promotes them to rule over the bigger things. And so the, so the first thing you want to be thinking of when you think of leadership is leadership is a mindset. And what is the mindset? The mindset is first, I must lead, I must rule myself. One of the first things that we taught our children is Proverbs 25, 28. From very young, from two years old, from three years old, as soon as they could be, they could understand words. As soon as they could understand responsibility, as soon as they could understand yes and no, we begin to teach them Proverbs 25, 28, which says, He that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down and without walls. The first place you need to lead is you. The, play, the first realm you need to lead is yourself. And there are many people that want leadership position, leadership rank, leadership authority, leadership title that have not learned how to discipline or rule themselves. So here's my nugget of wisdom. Everyone is a leader. So what kind of leader do you want to be? Do you want to be the kind of leader that people desire to follow? Or do you want to be the kind of leader that people look at and say, yes, I want to, I want to not follow their example. You see, Every action that you and I take, the behavior that we exemplify has everything to do with the people around us deciding, do I want to follow that example or do I want to avoid that example? And this is what I mean by everyone is a leader. You know, years ago, my wife and I brought two young girls into our home. One was seven, the other was two. They were adopted. And from seven years old, I taught the older one that she is a leader of her sister, which meant that I am going to hold her responsible when I give instructions for what needs to be done in the room, in an environment that's their space, that th that's their domain. She can't say, well, Lily did it or Lily, Lily didn't do it because I expect you to lead. And here's something that God taught me many, many years ago that I think can help you as a parent. If you begin to see your little children as leaders, it will affect how you train them, how you discipline them, how you hold them accountable, how you hold them responsible. What do I mean? There are many parents that allow their children to murmur, to complain, to slam doors, to get angry, to maybe hit their parents, right? Maybe they don't hit you hard at two, but they think it's okay to hit you. It is very foolish to believe it's okay to allow a two or three year old to hit you and not have any consequences not have not not be held accountable for that in any form in any way and not believe that somehow when they're 17 or 21 or 13 they're going to respect your authority so what would happen if you begin to see your two-year-old your six-year-old right i don't believe in terrible twos that's man's psychology and philosophy that's why so many parents their parenting is jacked up. Why? Because they've embraced a philosophy or an idea that once my child becomes two, they're supposed to act up. Well, that may be true. That doesn't mean you should allow it. That doesn't mean you should endure it. That doesn't mean you should be okay with it. So what would happen if you begin to see that five-year-old as a future wife or a future mother? What would those types of attitudes and behaviors look like 15 years later? See, this is what the Bible means when it says, train up a child in the way they should go. So that when they're old, they won't depart from it. If I allow you to murmur and complain and to slam the door and to throw tantrums and to, slam and to, and to stump your feet, you're, that's who you're going to be at 20. That's why there are wives and mothers and husbands and fathers that stump their feet and throw tantrums today. Some of them, you call them Karens. Right? Do you think they just grew up and one day just became a Karen? Or do you believe they were raised that way? I believe they were raised that way. So the first place to change the way you view the idea of leadership is you need to start with your thinking. That leadership is a mindset. 
That means that if you are five, a way to demonstrate leadership is to get up every morning and make your bed. That's taking responsibility for what's yours, right? Yes, so what? The five-year-old can't make the bed as good as you, but they're learning how to lead. Why? Because the first place you must lead is you. The second place you lead is in your home. That's why God says, if a man does not know how to first rule his home, then he should not be placed over the church. Then the second thing is leadership is a way of doing. What's the way of doing? Leaders lead leaders. In other words, you're not content with just saying, follow me. Your desire is to make the people that follow you into a leader, into a responsible person, into someone that is self-governed, self-ruled, self-disciplined. You know, my time is gone. There's so much more I want to say, but I got to jump off and jump on a meeting. The only thing I'm going to say is, as I end here, I want to say that um, as a child of God, I would encourage you to move, remove the language or replace the language that you are a Christian with, I am a disciple of Christ. That word has so many more nuances and so far more beneficial. To be a disciple is to be a disciplined one, to be a learner, to be a follower of a master with a desire to be like them. I think one of the worst things we've done as we've so Christianized the word Christian, and we've made it such a positive term that we've bleeded of all of its meaning. And so there are tons of people that identify themselves as Christian that are undisciplined. Listen to Jesus' words. Jesus says in John chapter 8, if you continue in my word, he doesn't say then are you a Christian. He says, if you continue in my word, then you are a disciple indeed, implying that there are disciples and then there are disciples indeed. That's the Bible's way of saying there are true disciples and false disciples. Not everyone following Jesus desires to be like Jesus. He says, then you would know the truth and the truth will make you free. I want to leave you with this question. Jesus says, if you continue in my word, then you're my disciple Indeed, and you will know the truth. The truth will make you free. Question. If you're not free until you're a disciple indeed, then what do we do with those that just identify with the term Christian who believe that to be a disciple is a higher level? You become a Christian first, then you grow to the place of discipleship. I'm going to challenge that for a moment that you begin as a disciple. Moses had disciples. John had disciples. Lord, teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples how to pray. Disciple does not mean you're a Christian. That's the beginning stage of following Jesus. You become a Christian, which is a negative term because people can see Christ in you. The book of Acts says the people were first called Christian at Antioch. Why? Because they can tell the people had been with Jesus. They could tell there was something unique about their words, about their behavior that identified them with the one they followed who said, follow me and I will make you to become fishes of men. If you're a follower of Jesus, you should have a desire to reach people for Jesus because the goal of his leadership training is to make you like him. That means he imparts to those who follow him a burden for lost souls as he had them. Well, that's my thought for today. God bless you guys.